tera momo wahile mo hio kite fakaranga sire ite tangata mo hio kite manaki ite tangata mo hio me peha e tau ite mauri o tangata it was never about her it was she was always about her people we used to have backpackers call in. You know, she'll get them off the road with their thumb on on the side of the road, and she'll tell them to come up for a cup of tea. Then next minute, it's married into the <laughs> married into the bay, <laughs> and becomes a part of us. Everything she did was to teach. Even if you went up there to make a coffee, you probably got taught how to make it properly. Sometimes we'd go up to the house homestead again, and there'd be some other famous people inside. Whoa, yeah, yeah. She created poignant, meaningful, intentional relationships in her journey to segue us into, into this new world that would embrace Taumata. She had a, a forward vision that's apparent in, in her writings. It seems that even in this day and age, they're pertinent what's happening right now. In fact, today they're reaching out to her songs. You had to be sharp, because she was sharp. <laughs> because she could do everything. Mm. She, she expected you to do it too. And she, she had to be the way she was because we had some real hard case whānau. <laughs> they tried all sorts. Some got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> they were lucky. Can we name them? <laughs> no. <laughs> no naming and shaming. <laughs> predicted by Tuhun Lai that she was going to be great. So until she wrote that first song of hers, her parents didn't actually know what that greatness was going to be. Eh? And, mm. Until she wrote that first song and then Abhirananata realised the potential and that she had for writing, not just writing songs, but producing the music. <laughs> Tiao, he hakari tae ngā Māori o e nei wā nei. Mere he pātai i tērā. Mā tua whakapai tō mara e ka whakapai te marae o te tangata. Koe re te ki awa tāga koroa kuia. Kia ora i ngā mā tua, ngā whanaunga, ngā tāwanga langa mā, ngā hau e pā e noho nei i roto i te marumaru o tō tātou pare e whakarongo nei ki ngā kōreo. Ka re noe ro tā, te roa ngā te kai a hena. She was a famous queer and known widely. Who would have thought that, you know, that she would uh, uh, achieve the greatness, you know, by working with people like Tui Teka, <laughs> eh? like Tui Teka, like Dalvanius. And my dad used to always talk about him being overruled when Nanny Tweeney would be talking to people like Apirangata, and he was just a boy then with Nanny Tweeney. Well, that's how I felt when I was a little fella. Being with this woman, this queer, who was famous, hey, and, and TVs had just come out, and there she was on TV receiving an award, a record, a gold record. Eipo, hey, far out. 
And then you get another one, uh, Dalvanius Poirier. They must be a simple message in there, because they use the same uh, uh, pool. <laughs> so you keep the message simple, finally. Let's just keep it simple. The mastery of Moi is her ability to communicate and communicate with ultimate clarity. Nowadays, um, real Māori composition for recorded music, for kapahaka, sometimes you need a dictionary to translate the dictionary, to translate the ideas that are being positioned inside um, contemporary composition. Whereas uh, Moi's composition, the ideas are marama. And it's not that the language is simple or childish or of a lower grade. It's of a higher elevated um, position of thought, actually. And the ideas are so well presented. She also presents several layers of unpacking a certain phrase to get a deeper meaning uh, of that particular, um, particular phrase. He me me that composition in particular talks about um, the struggle between um, righteousness, doing things right, um, and capitalism. Gold and rubies and diamonds, those things will yet, they'll, f they'll flash in front of you and they'll glisten beautifully uh, all over the land, but that glisten and shine is nothing in comparison to the glow of the Lord. Uh, so those kind of uh, concepts, um, she weaves effortlessly inside, um, inside her compositions. That's the mastery of Moi, and that's also a part of the legacy that she leaves behind for us. I remember she wrote a song for Teachers Training College that came up from the South Island while we were sitting in the kitchen. She wrote a song for anybody who came and it would be those groups who would come out one day and go, oh, this was written by Ngoi Pe Whairangi and then they'd sing it and you go, wow. You know, it wasn't all stage and lights, it was just sit here, have a cup of tea, men will be cutting the meat in the back, nannies are playing yuka down the end of the table and that's how she would write. Or she'd sing a, li sing a line and say a word and that might be the right word and then oh somebody in the card table will call out no, da da da, oh okay so they go da da, change the word or they might suggest a word and she'd backfire and go no, da da da. She wrote with everybody's involvement Yes, our, our man doing the bop along the, um, the, the Aotea Waka, although it was, you know, for TV purposes, you know, that's what's attracting the kids. That's going to get them singing Māori songs, and that's what we want. She wasn't hard and fast about that. That wasn't saying that she was disrespectful to any tikanga, not at all, but she was open-minded to evolution and and moving forward for for our for us as a Fano. I'm never forgetting those those main things say. So. We live in a world now, especially in Aotearoa, where uh, the use of Tiro Māori in popular music and recorded music is a go-to. Um, is a celebrated novelty at the moment and where people uh, are free, are liberated to express and to exercise um, that language muscle that they have uh, grown up with it was because of people like Moi uh, and the lineage that Moi comes from and their constant, constant um, and unwavering presence to 
push and naturalize Tel Maori, that we're the beneficiaries of it. Haruru, my name. There was Nanny.